Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff Kessel. I'm an anesthesiologist in Roanoke, Virginia. When the coronavirus pandemic started, uh, I thought, started thinking, how are we going to be able to uh, protect ourselves against this virus? And as the uh, personal protective equipment uh, um, necessity has uh, grown more dire, uh, I've been working with uh, Virginia Tech uh, and uh, Stryker to come up with a solution for the Stryker togas that they use in orthopedic surgery. We uh, have taken this concept and tested it with uh, nanoparticles down at Virginia Tech uh, to prove uh, concept, and we can show you how to have an N99 or better a PAPR unit that you can use with readily available materials in the hospital and your ortho striker helmet. So uh, what I started thinking about was how was how would we be able to take the striker helmet and be able to apply something over top of it to make it protective. And, and we very quickly figured out that uh, there wasn't enough structure to the top of the helmet to be able to put something over top of it because it just would collapse on the inside and come off. Uh, and so we came up with the idea of putting a ring around the helmet to make it uh, have more purchase area. Um, so essentially we uh, created a, a ring that is a 12 inch PVC pipe that uh, has been cut to uh, width of uh, an inch and a quarter with a three quarter inch groove cut out of the center of it. Uh, this is very rigid and very stable. Uh, the PVC pipe that we found to be the best is the white pipe. I'm not sure about whatever pipes you would have available. Uh, this material uh, can be sourced uh, through us here in Roanoke. Uh, this is not a money-making thing. This is just a matter of if you need uh, stuff quickly, we can help make that happen. Um, found that uh, Velcro was the best way to attach it to the helmet. Uh, there's a piece of Velcro on the top of the striker helmet here, right uh, below the uh, hook for the face shield. And there's a piece of Velcro on the back of the helmet, right below the fan area there. Those come off very easily. They won't damage the helmet and your orthopedic surgeons won't be upset uh, when this is all said and done. Um, then you have matching uh, Velcro on the uh, ring uh, to help hold it onto the helmet. Um, what we found was that on the, it's easiest to put this on the back of the helmet and work it as up to the top of the Velcro as best as possible. And then as you put this other section down, kind of work it down as close to the hook on the front as possible. You still need to have a little bit of room to hook your face shield in on top of the, the helmet there. And so once that's in place, you actually have this kind of uh, crown looking appearance on top of the, on top of the helmet uh, that gives it a lot of extra structure to attach pieces to. Um, and kind of jokingly with the coronavirus, we named this the striker crown uh, uh, because it looks like a crown when you're wearing it and because of the coronavirus. Once you have the uh, ring in place, then actually it's very easy to then attach the uh, regular striker toga on, on top of it. Um, they come inside out and so it's actually pretty easy to then take and put your hook uh, for the face shield on top of the uh, hook right there and then you attach the magnets to the face shield uh, here. Um, and then once it's in place on the, on the actual helmet, then you actually just kind of drape the uh, uh, gown up and over and just gently work it back so you don't end up tearing anything. And so they're pretty resilient. And so once you get it in place there, then you need to start the zipper down the back a little bit um, to help kind of hold it in place and make it so that it is uh, um, easier to get the other material on. And so now you have essentially the toga with the uh, crown on top of it, and you can see how it kind of gives you the structure here. The key to this is actually getting all of the white material inside of the ring to make sure that you are protected because that is where the air comes through from the fan. This material is 0.185 micron, uh, and so it's not protective against the virus. The suit by itself actually passes a Bittrex test uh, without anything added to it, but the company was not comfortable uh, promoting this as being uh, uh, viral protective. And when we tested it, we actually found that its fit test was only like a three or a four, uh, that it actually let in lots of uh, outside particles. Um, so the key is to make sure that the white section is inside of your ring right here. And it's pretty easy to kind of work this material around and stuff and kind of pull it up so that it actually fits inside. Once you have that on uh, there, then we actually are gonna add some extra material to the top of it to make it so that uh, it is protective. Um, going through a number of iterations, uh, working with Stryker, working with Virginia Tech nanoparticle uh, 
um, engineering department, uh, we actually found that uh, the uh, halyard material, which is the uh, standard uh, case wrap material that you would normally have uh, for your ORs, uh, is the most protective. Um, and uh, this actually ends up being uh, a 44 by 22 rectangle that's folded in half. And so you end up with a 22 by 22 inch square, and that ends up being the easiest to get on and off uh, when you put it on the helmet. It's critical that uh, when you use the halyard material that you are folding it over and actually creating four layers for it to be protective. A single layer by itself was not protective as well as the, the four layers together. And we found that actually folding it over and keeping it as one piece was the easiest way to attach it to the helmet. Uh, having separate pieces, two separate squares, actually made the squares want to slide over top of each other and were much more difficult to put on. And so really this seems to be the best way to do it, have a rectangle that you just fold in half so that you truly have two squares and then you can put them on top of the helmet. And so once you actually lay this on top of the helmet here, this actually uh, becomes an N99 or better uh, PAPR unit uh, with the fan on. We had the fan on high, uh, we had it in their nanoparticle uh, generator area, uh, testing it uh, with particle penetration. Uh, we use silicon dioxide uh, at a range of 100 to 300 nanometers. Uh, blowing out at 500,000 to 600,000 particles per cubic centimeter, which is uh, essentially blowing a, a fire hydrant at the top of the, of the uh, gown here. And uh, we were able to show uh, uh, N99 uh, or better uh, protection with a fit test of 300 or better, uh, which is excellent protection once this is in place. We also figured out that uh, trying to get this on, we used a number of different O-rings and rubber bands, and none of those seemed to work very well, but the good old zip tie seemed to be the best way to put this on. This is a 48 inch uh, zip tie that you can get uh, in boxes at Home Depot. Uh, we uh, um, found that this was the best way to attach the, uh, um, s the material to the top of the crown. Uh, it also, you need to start it and put in about five and a half to five and three quarter inches of a tail to make it easiest to put on with one person. If you're doing it with two people, it's relatively easy, but if you're trying to do it yourself, it actually works best if it's fairly tight when you go to put it on. And then I found that if you just take this and make sure your uh, material is in front of your ring there so you don't have any gaps, if you just start this at the front and seat it inside of the ring there and just kind of work your hands back, you can actually get this to sit with a little bit of pressure, you have to put a little bit of pressure back down on it to get it to squeeze into that, to that little ring that we have there. And once you get it down to uh, flush here, then it's best to give it a little extra, little extra tug there so that it hugs into that, that, that uh, groove there. And then you can work on working around to make sure that it's fairly flat on top and you don't have a lot of really big grooves uh, where the air can, a lot of little micro grooves are okay. A big groove, you have the potential for air penetration into the helmet. Although once you get this tightened down, you can pull this pretty tight here. And once that is seated, you now have complete containment of the top of the hood. And if you look at it here, you can see how it's kind of all the way around, right? And if you look at it at the front here, um, you can see how now the entire portion of the helmet is, uh, is now enclosed inside of the material here and the zip tie just kind of sticks out the back. Um, yes, yeah, it's got some funny wings on the front of it there, but those actually make it a lot easier to take off once you're done using it. And so that right there is an N99 or better protection. Uh, you can turn the fan on, it has good ventilation. Um, you, you don't get terribly overheated. It's a little bit warm, but not bad, but you actually have pretty good airflow. Um, and uh, because most of us are wearing regular surgical masks, I would encourage you to wear just a regular surgical mask in underneath of this, especially for the doffing procedure to make sure there's no contamination. Uh, but in terms of this protecting you, uh, I would feel very safe uh, with the, the um, strenuousness of the testing we did with the nanoparticles to show that there's nothing getting through this except just pure clean air. All right, so if you were doing this by yourself, it's actually pretty easy to uh, um, have the uh, you know hood and ready to go and stuff. Just be careful about grabbing a hold of the crown. You can pop the stuff off and then you'd have to restart again. It's actually easiest to kind of hold by the helmet, like on the inside of the helmet. But if you grab a hold of the helmet itself, it's it's just like a, like a bike helmet or whatever. It's easy to kind of slide on and set up over top of your head. And once you actually get it on, there's a, a little adjustment lob in the back that helps make it tight 
and just get that down over your head. So once you get it on, you can actually you know, put your arms in all the way and you can see that now, I mean, I'm fully covered and protected uh, from all the evil coronavirus that I might come in contact with. And so we're gonna double glove here for safety purposes. Forgive me, they're medium glove. I'll show the double glove process where we actually in our facility actually wear a set of sterile gloves over the outside because they come up further on the sleeves with regular gloves on the inside. But for, for appearances, we're just gonna use the double glove here. And so um, you actually uh, will have the back of it zipped up and you can do whatever you need to. The batteries last for a long period of time. If you needed to have your battery changed out, it'd be very easy for someone to unzip the back of your, your gown outside of a coronavirus uh, area and be able to just slip in a new battery and be able to start your fan back up again. But right now, I've got very good airflow, I'm very comfortable, and I'm done taking care of my coronavirus patient. And so when I come back out again and I'm ready to be done, I think the best doffing procedure would be to clean your hands like you normally would clean your hands, right? So that you've now scrubbed your outside gloves the easiest way to take this by yourself is just to grab a hold of the wings here and actually put your fingers up against the ring and just roll them up towards the top so that way it just pops off and now you have this portion that's now popped off you're outside you can take this and throw it into the red garbage bags like you normally would right and so now that's done and off and in the red garbage bag you can save the zip ties if you wanted to. You could take those and bleach them or wipe them down however you needed to. Now you're left with the regular gown. You clean your gloves again, right? You're gonna need some help unzipping the back, but once the back is unzipped, then you can actually reach up to just to the top edges of your gown here and grab a hold of it and actually take it and work it up and over and peel it down and across the front and now all you're left with is the helmet on and your face mask. And as you peel the gown down, you can actually take your outer layer of gloves off inside of your gown as they come off with the rest of, of your gown here. Sorry, I'm here. They come off with the rest of your gown, right? And that can go in the red bag. And same thing on this side. This one can come down and you can take your outer glove off with the gown. And now you're left with relatively clean hands here and you have nothing else on you and that's all been put into red trash bags to go away and so now you can do the process of taking these gloves off and working them into your other hand here and taking those off and putting those into now the red bag then now you can go wash your hands and the whole time you just have the helmet on your head and then when you're all said and done you can take the helmet off but it has been completely protected the entire time so that the other pappers that you wear on the outside have to go back and be cleaned and sterilized and everything. This, for the most part, has not been contaminated because it has been covered the entire time by the papper. So I hope you uh, enjoy the uh, use of your striker helmets as a potential uh, papper for uh, your hospitals. These are readily available. You can use them now. I've had permission for Stryker to actually push this out to everybody. Uh, and uh, I'm working with the local manufacturer to help make the rings. So if you need them or need help with them, please contact me. I can help you uh, show you how to make them or to source them for you, uh, as well as the zip ties. Uh, the rest of the stuff you should have in your hospital. Be safe out there, everybody. Thank you.